This video conveys a small part of the knowledge in Buddhism that differs from beliefs in other religions. This video is intended for Buddhists. This video is not suitable for non-Buddhist followers to watch. If you are non-Buddhist and still want to watch then make the knowledge in this video just as an insight, nothing more. This video is entitled, Where is the Buddha? Edited from Ven. K. Sri Dhammananda. Where did the Buddha go or where does he live now? This is a very difficult question to answer for those who have not developed the spiritual way of life because they think about life from a worldly perspective. It is a difficult thing for people to understand the concept of Buddha. Some missionaries of certain religions come to Buddhists and say that the Buddha is not God, he is a human being. He had died and disappeared. How does one benefit from worshipping the dead? But we understand that the Buddha is called Satta Deva Manasaneng, teacher of gods and humans. While the Buddha was still alive, whenever the gods had a problem, they could go to the Buddha for his advice. The missionaries claim their god is the living god and that is why everyone should worship him. According to science, it takes millions of years for humans to develop their minds and understandings. When the human mind was not yet fully developed, they were aware of the forces that made nature work. Since they could not understand exactly how nature works, they began to think that there must be someone who created and maintained this nature. To help others understand the concept, they convert energy into a form to represent physically in the form of statues and paintings. These spirits or powers are so important to make people do something good and not do something bad. To reward them if they do something good, they have fear, worry, suspicion, insecurity, so they need someone to depend on and protect them. That's why they tried to introduce the idea of an eternal spirit that resides in heaven and is eternal. It quenches their thirst for eternal life. The Buddha said that everything that arises in an existence is subject to change, destruction and decay. When we analyze the life of the Buddha, we see that he never introduced himself as a son of God or messenger, but rather as an enlightened religious teacher. At the same time the Buddha did not introduce himself as an incarnation of another Buddha. The Buddha was not created by another Buddha, so Buddha is not the reincarnation of another Buddha. He is an individual who works for long periods of time, develops the afterlife, and cultivates all the great qualities, virtues and wisdom that we call paramita or perfection. When he perfects all the good qualities, he attained enlightenment which is a perfect understanding of how the universe works. People ask how did the Buddha attain enlightenment? Buddhists maintain that every individual can develop a mind to understand everything. The meaning of the word, manusa, in various languages means human. The meaning of the word, mana, is thought. Therefore, manusa is a human being who can build and develop his mind towards perfection. Apart from humans there is no other living being in this universe who can expand his mind to such an extent as to attain enlightenment. Not even superpowers can become Buddhas because they cannot develop their minds to such a large extent. They have worldly sensuality, peace, a prosperous life. But the power of their minds is very weak. Only humans can become Buddhas or enlightened ones. When people say that Buddha is not a god, 
We don't need to prove that he is either. If we try to prove this then we are actually degrading the concept of enlightenment. One day, a Christian priest along with his followers came to see me, Ven. K. Sri Dhammananda, to discuss Buddhism and asked, Actually can you tell me what Buddhists believe? Then I told him the truth, that Buddhists don't believe in anything. Then he pointed to my book, What Buddhists Believe, and he asked, Why did you write this book? I told him, That's why I wrote the book, for you to read. To see if there is anything you believe in. I told him, The Buddha has given the answer to that question. The Buddha has advised us what we should do. Instead of believing, one should practice Pariyati, Patipati and Pativeta. There are three ways to practice. The Buddha said that we should try to understand because we should not blindly believe in anything we cannot understand. In his teachings on the Noble Eightfold Path, the first thing is Samadithi or Right Understanding. The Buddha began his mission by asking his followers to develop understanding, not blind faith or belief. After studying we gain great knowledge about the Buddha and his teachings. You must practice what you have learned. If you do not understand it you will try to create ideas based on your own imagination. His advice is to practice what you have learned with understanding. After practicing you will experience the result or effect. These are the three methods that the Buddha taught, namely study, understanding, and practice. This is the way to live in this world to escape suffering. In introducing religion, the Buddha didn't ask us to believe anything, but to learn, understand, practice, and experience the results. For example, the Buddha said that you have to be kind, you have to be honest. When you have done that then after that everyone respects you because they know that you are very kind, very honest. Nobody wants to bother you or blame you, but they respect you. That's a good result you experience. At the same time the Buddha said that you should try to understand according to your own level of experience. You can test the results of your training. You understand why some things are wrong and why some things are right, you are not following a command that came from heaven. You have the mind and common sense to understand. Our personal understanding and experience is sufficient to understand why something is wrong or right. The Buddha advised us not to destroy the lives of other beings. He did not introduce this as a religious law because human understanding would know that killing is cruel. It's not hard for us to understand why this is bad. Because when someone else comes and tries to kill us, we definitely don't like it. Again, he said that when you have something of value stolen by someone, how do you feel? In the same way when we steal other people's property they don't like it either. It is not necessary for us to take orders from any God or from Buddha or Jesus to understand this simple concept. These religious teachers appear in the world to remind us what we have neglected. Your own personal experience and understanding is more than enough to know why certain things are right or wrong. The Buddha advised us to think and understand. We have reasoned thoughts. We have common sense, unlike other living beings who also have minds but cannot think rationally. Their minds are limited to seeking food, shelter, protection and sensual pleasures. They do not expand their minds more broadly. But humans have a mind to think and understand to the maximum extent. 
This is why scientists have investigated and discovered things we have never heard of before. There is no other living being in this world that can develop a mind as broad as the human mind. That's why only humans can become Buddhas. By developing the mind, man can attain enlightenment. The Buddha told us to act according to experience. Then we know the result. Followers of all other religions, greet others, saying, God bless you. But Buddhists very rarely greet others by saying, Buddha bless you. But they read over and over again, Budung Saranang Gachami, which means, I take refuge in the Buddha. If they believe they have the protection of the Buddha, why don't they greet others by saying, The Buddha blesses you. The Buddha also advised people to remember the Buddha when they feel afraid. So, where is the Buddha, is our topic. Can we say that he is in heaven or that he lives in Nibbana or that he lives somewhere else? Where did he go? We must remember that whatever we ask is a form from a worldly point of view. After attaining enlightenment the Buddha said, Chicken Antima Jati, Natthi Dani Punabhavo, which means, this is my last birth, there is no more rebirth. I have stopped endless rebirths in this world, from life to life, and experienced endless suffering. The pleasure or entertainment that humans experience is a temporary emotional satisfaction that will disappear in a short time. This creates dissatisfaction throughout life. Mentally and physically, we experience immense suffering, worry, trouble, pain, hardship, disaster, and dissatisfaction. No one in this world says that he is always satisfied with this life. Everyone has complained and grumbled about physical or mental problems. By understanding that state the Buddha has stopped rebirth. This is called safety. Salvation means freedom from physical and mental suffering. By being in physical form we cannot overcome physical and mental suffering. Therefore if we don't want to suffer, the best thing is to stop the birth. We thirst for manifestation or existence. This thirst and attachment is very strong in our minds. We are irritated with suffering, sorrow, pain and various other problems because of our thirst and ignorance. Now look at what is happening in this world. The whole world is a battlefield. People all over the world create violence and bloodshed, war and destruction. Unlike animals, they do not create problems to suffer. When they are hungry they catch and eat other living things to relieve their hunger and then go to sleep. But man is not satisfied without thirsting for many things. Thirst. Attachment are very strong in the human mind. Jealousy, enmity, anger, cruelty and evil arise. Other living beings do not develop their cruelty to such a great extent. Humans have religion. Religion is not just worshipping and praying but doing a service to other living beings by keeping away from bad thoughts so that they can serve other beings. The veneration aspect in religion is important but will not be able to develop the mind to achieve proper and wise understanding. Before the Buddha died, Many people gave him flowers and paid respects to him. The Buddha asked them to go home. He said that if they really wanted to honor him, apart from flowers and worship, they should practice at least one of the advices he gave. Thus they really respect the Buddha. Now you can understand what the Buddha wanted. The way of religious life is not only to pray but to follow some of the advice given by him. 
Once a monk named Bakula came and sat in front of the Buddha and looked at him every day. One day the Buddha asked him, What are you doing here? He replied, When I see the Lord's physical body, it gives me much happiness. Then the Buddha said, Bakula, by looking at this filthy, repulsive, impermanent physical body, what do you get? You only please your feelings, you will never attain knowledge or understanding but please your feelings. You cannot see the real Buddha through the physical body. Buddha is not a physical body. Then the Buddha said, only he who understands the Dhamma taught by the Buddha sees the real Buddha. The real Buddha comes to mind when we understand what the Buddha taught. Here you can understand that the Buddha is not about the physical body. When you study Indian history, in the nearly 500 years after the Buddha's Parinibbana there wasn't a single image that is a statue or image of the Buddha, because the Buddha didn't encourage everyone to erect an image of himself. It was the Greeks who created the image of the Buddha and other forms of religious symbols. Now of course the different forms of Buddha images have spread all over the world. Adherents of several other religions condemn Buddhists as idolaters. Yet they do not know what Buddhists understand. To explain about the Buddha image, we can follow the following story. 300 years after the life of the Buddha, there was a famous monk called Upagutha. He is a very famous speaker. When he gave a lecture thousands of people gathered. Mara the Evil One was very displeased that more and more people were becoming religious. Mara is not only identified as an evil being, but also the Kilesas, the shackles of time and death, which can prevent one from going on the path of spiritual life. The Mara began to perform interesting performances, dances, songs, and rejoicing in front of the Vira. Then the listeners of the monk Upagatha's discourse slowly turned to look at Mara until finally no one listened to Upagatha's discourse. Upagutha decided to teach Mara a good lesson. He went to see the show. When the show ended, Upagutha said he really appreciated it. In honor of your show I would like to put this wreath around your neck. Mara was very proud. When Upagutha put the garland on, Mara felt the garland coil around his neck like a python. He tried to let go but couldn't. Then he went to Saka, king of the gods and asked him to take off the necklace. Saka tried his best but he couldn't let go. Then Mara went to Brahma who at that time was seen as the creator god and asked him to remove the necklace. Brahma tried to let him go but to no avail. Then Brahma told Mara that only the one who put it down could let it go. Then Mara had to return to the venerable Upagutha and begged him to let him go otherwise Mara would die. Then Upagutha said, it is not difficult but I can only do it under two conditions. First, you must promise that in the future you will not interfere in anything with our religious activities. Mara agreed. The second thing is that you have seen the Buddha and on several occasions you have tried to disturb the Buddha. You have the psychic power to display the physical body of the Buddha. Then Mara said, yes, I will if you promise not to worship me when I appear as the Buddha because I am not a saint. Then the venerable Upagutha said, I will not worship you. But when Mara appeared in the form of the Buddha, the venerable Upagutha immediately honored him. Then Mara shouted, you promised not to worship. Then Upagutha said, 
I do not worship Mara but honor the Buddha. It is a good example for people to explain to others the meaning of respecting Buddha images. You can also use a Buddha image as an object of meditation. This is not a form of idolatry, but you invite the Buddha into your mind through this symbol. It is a religious symbol. How the image of the Buddha appeals to the human mind can also be understood through one of the following events. Mr. Nehru, the former Prime Minister of India, was previously arrested by the British government. When he was in detention, he had a small Buddha image in his pocket. He took out the image and placed it on the table and looked at it and thought, Despite the many distractions, problems and difficulties in this world, if the Buddha can keep his face smiling, why don't we imitate this great man? But appearance is not the most important thing. Many people can practice the Buddha's teachings without any form. It is not their obligation to have an image. We don't worship, we don't pray. We don't ask for anything from images but we worship. We pay homage to the figure of a great spiritual man. There is also another incident as follows. One of the Buddhists has kept a Buddha image for 45 years in his house. One day some missionaries from other religions came and told him that he worshipped the devil. He didn't know how to answer. This was surprising because after 45 years he had worshipped the image but didn't know what to say when others cursed him. This is the weakness of some Buddhists. They follow traditions, worship, pray, make offerings, and chant but they do not understand the Buddha's teachings. From these two events, now you can understand that with or without a Buddha image you can practice the teachings of the Buddha. Because the physical body is not the Buddha. Related to the topic. People ask where the Buddha is. To practice Buddhism it is not necessary for us to know where the Buddha is or where he has gone. Take a look at these common behaviors. 1. We have electricity invented by someone. Is it important for us to know the person who invented electricity? Where was he and what country did he come from and what was his name? Our job is to use that electricity. 2. Those who discovered atomic energy, the energy can be used for the purpose of building or destroying. Our job is to use atomic energy for a good cause. It is not necessary to know exactly who discovered atomic energy. 3. Humans have invented computers and television, but it is not important for us to know their names and other details. Our job is to use them. In the same way do not ask where the Buddha is. Or where he has gone. If the Dhamma, what he teaches is true, available, and effective why is it necessary to know where the Buddha is? The Buddha also never said that he could get us into heaven or hell. The Buddha tells us what to do and what not to do to attain salvation, that's the only thing the Buddha did. He can't do anything for you. Our job is to practice what the Buddha taught us. Others say that their God can erase the mistakes made by humans. The Buddha never said that mistakes created by one person can be erased by another, by the Buddha, by a deity or by a God. When a person is about to die and says he believes in God, all the mistakes he has done can God erase his mistakes? For example, maybe you are a very high-tempered person, and you know this is wrong, but you don't know how to get rid of it. Then you go to pray to God and ask God to remove the badness in your mind. Do you think any God can do it? 
You can go to worship the Buddha and ask the Buddha to get rid of your badness. But the Buddha couldn't get rid of your very high-tempered ugliness. The Buddha can only tell you how to move your anger away with your own efforts. No one can help you but yourself through your understanding. It is yourself who must realize, this anger is dangerous, it can cause a lot of trouble, hurt and annoy other people. We should try to reduce anger with our inner strength and create a strong desire to remove anger from the mind. So neither the Buddha nor God can erase the mistakes we make, we can do it ourselves. There is good advice given by the Buddha. Whoever has done bad deeds or bad karma, they cannot erase their effects by praying to God or to Buddha. When they find out that they have done bad deeds, then they should stop doing bad deeds again. They should have a strong determination in mind to create more and more wholesome karma or wholesome actions. When we develop virtuous actions, the effects of the bad karma we did previously will be overcome by the good karma. An example of good and bad karma is the story of Angulamala, a murderer who killed nearly a thousand people. When the Buddha found out he came to see him, Angulamala wanted to kill the Buddha because he had completed 999 killings. He vowed to kill a thousand people. So he was very happy when he saw the Buddha and he tried to catch him. Knowing that it was difficult to teach this person, the Buddha occasionally performed a little miracle. The Buddha walked normally and allowed Angulamala to run after him. Even though Angulamala had run almost four miles, he could not approach the Buddha. Then Angulamala asked the Buddha to stop and the Buddha knew it was time for the Buddha to speak to Angulamala. The Buddha said, I have stopped, you are the one running. Angulamala said, how can you say that you have stopped, I saw you walking. The Buddha replied, I have stopped means I have stopped killing or destroying living beings. You running means you're still committing crimes. If you stop running then you can catch me. Then Angulamala said, I cannot understand what you are saying. Then the Buddha said, I have stopped killing and you are still doing it. That is what it means to run. You run in Sasara. Then Angulamala found out that he was wrong and decided to follow the Buddha and he became a monk and began to meditate. That's what the Buddha said. The Buddha taught this method to overcome the effects of bad karma not by praying to any god but by doing more and more wholesome deeds. Returning to the topic, the Buddha did not live in any part of the universe in a physical form. Does that mean non-existence? More precisely is the end of physical and mental suffering and the experience of Nibbana or liberation. Nor is it true to say that the Buddha is alive or not. It is more than sufficient for us if the doctrines or teachings of the Buddha are beneficial for us to experience peace and contentment in life. For example, a doctor who finds a drug that is very effective. If medicine is useful, can cure disease, there is no need for us to know where this doctor is and is he still alive or not. The important thing is that we recover from the disease by taking the drug. Likewise, the teachings of the Buddha are more than sufficient for us to get rid of all our suffering. The Buddha has given us the right to think freely in understanding whether something is wrong by using our common sense as a basis for us to understand the true nature of things that exist.
There is nothing that exists in any part of the universe that is without change, without decay and without destruction because all of this is a combination of element, energy and mental power and kamic power. It is therefore impossible for the energies and elements or mental powers and kamic powers to remain forever without change. If you can understand this then the teachings of the Buddha will help you to understand how to deal with your problems and difficulties to overcome our dissatisfaction. Otherwise, we will face physical and mental suffering, dissatisfaction and disappointment. We need to act wisely to get rid of our problems. It is difficult for us to get rid of our suffering just by praying worshipping anyone, but by understanding the real problems and difficulties, we will be able to get rid of various problems. Many people ask where did the Buddha go? If someone says that the Buddha went to Nibbana, then they think that Nibbana is somewhere. Nibbana is not a place. Nibbana is a mental state for those of us who attain the experience of final liberation. We cannot say that the Buddha has gone somewhere or that the Buddha is still there, but that he experienced Nibbana or the ultimate goal in life. To the question, where is the Buddha? So the best answer is that the Buddha is in your mind who has realized the ultimate truth. Thus the description in this video entitled, Where is the Buddha? Hopefully this video is useful. See you again in another video on this channel which is always accompanied by an interesting bonus video, with the hope that it won't be boring to watch. You can find this channel on YouTube under the name, Hermanahadi. Thank you very much for watching this video. May you be healthy, happy, fond of doing good and eager to live life with a peaceful heart. Bye bye.